Welcome to another episode of Video Game Reviews. And today we're going to be talking about Toe Jam and Earl Back in the Groove on the Nintendo Switch. Okay, so uh, first of all, an interesting fact about this game, which you may not know. Uh, so uh, there's a company called Bunny Ears, which was involved in the publication uh, of this game, and that is actually owned by uh, Macaulay Culkin of Home Alone fame. Uh, so he he's uh, at least one of the people that uh, you can thank for bringing back classic Toe Jam and Earl. Now, to, to kind of get to it, uh, if you're not familiar with Toe Jam and Earl, well, <clears throat> let's start this way. If you are familiar with Toe Jam and Earl, how does this one hold up? Well, if you love the first game, you should love this. It's basically a, for the most part, pretty cool looking, updated, kind of a cell shaded look uh, to the classic original. Um, I also feel like there are uh, additional enemies, additional um, helpful characters, and additional RPG elements to some extent compared to the original, but uh, they don't go too overboard with it. It stays pretty darn faithful, and this is a game, if you were a fan of the original, that uh, you, like myself, you've probably been thinking that this game deserved a, a some kind of a re-release or an update for a very very long time if you're not familiar with toe jam and earl then this is quite an uh, quite an undertaking for me to try to explain it uh because it truly is a unique game i can't really think of any game i've ever played on any platform where i could say oh that's just like tj and e uh, there's there's nothing so it's pretty fun as a single player it's kind of great as a co-op in my opinion uh, and so just a quick rundown on it gosh where to even begin like it's dated like the theme is dated it's like late 80s early 90s uh, hip-hop themed slash uh, George Clinton funkadelic themed okay uh for, for lack of a better description uh and so basically you are aliens who crash land on earth and your spaceship explodes and you have to go through 25 levels uh, and collect somewhere scattered across 25 levels are 10 pieces of your spaceship and the whole point of the game is to find so you explore these landscapes you know and you can go you can take an elevator, that's how you travel from level to level. You can t take an elevator up to uh, a further level, or you can fall off a cliff down to a previous level. And uh, anyway, so you're, so you're exploring these 25 levels, trying to find the 10 pieces of your ship. And all the while, you are um, being attacked by Earthlings, and you are using you have no attack you have by default no attack uh and so you you find presents like like christmas presents or or what a birthday presents wrapped up uh and you don't know what's inside them you can pay a wise man to identify them uh so that you do know what's inside them or you can just open them and hope for the best and some of them will have positive effects some of them will have negative effects uh, some of them will be like food to to replenish your life. Some of them will be a weapon Like in this case, it would be like uh, tomatoes that you can throw but only for a limited time There are uh, rocket skates which make you move really really fast which can be helpful, but also can You know can be detrimental Because they're pretty hard to control uh, you can get Icarus wings, which allow you to fly for a while. You can get an inner tube, which helps you with swimming. Uh, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. I mean, it could be anything. It could be a promotion, which is like an instant level up. Like you open a present and you just, you just immediately level up, which is one of, if not the best present that you can get. By contrast, the worst present, arguably, that you could get is, uh, there's a level down. And then there's also a randomizer, which means all of the presents which you have already identified uh, get mixed up again and you don't know what anything is. Yeah, that's that's like a decent preliminary explanation. 
Um, it's, you really just gotta play it for yourself. Um, I don't, there may be words to describe this game better than what I've done, but I, I don't know what they are. Uh, it's really a bizarre game, but it's great fun if you give yourself the chance to, uh, like, learn it and warm up to it and get to that point where it becomes second nature and you know what you're doing. It's... It's just such a unique title. Uh, so, anyway, that's it, man. That's Toe Jam and Earl back in the groove. Uh, it's basically like a, a revamped version of the original game, which, I mean, I would argue, I think a lot of people would argue, is, is the best in the series. Uh, if I remember correctly, it's... I think it's a little steep. I think it's like 25 It might be $20, 20 or 25 And it goes on sale, but if I'm not mistaken, it's pretty rare that it goes on sale. So you probably, if you're interested, you'd have to pay full price. And so the bottom line is, do I recommend that? Um, if you're a Toe Jam and Earl fan like myself, and maybe you didn't even know that this, that this game was released, because uh, I feel like it didn't get a ton of hype, 100%. Yeah, dude, it's totally worth $25 to get a to get a new Toe Jam and Earl game and to, you know, let the developer know that you support this this type of game. This this sort of bizarre unique uh thing that they've decided to to go back to. You know what I mean? This, this wasn't really like a super safe bet. I feel like this isn't like releasing another Mario or a Zelda or a Sonic. You know it's going to um, be popular and, and sell. Toe Jam and Earl's a little bit more uh, under the radar, I feel like. So, anyway, kudos to those guys. Kudos to you guys for tuning in. I appreciate your viewership. Um, if you haven't already, please click like and subscribe. Click the little bell. And goodbye.